listening to the Real Life Church Podcast. To learn more about Real Life Church, including our gathering times in Yuma, Arizona, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com. Today's talk comes from Pastor Bob Van Horn. Well, if you're watching today, you are watching us at Real Life Church as we look at another aspect of this very radical message that Jesus is talking about on the Sermon on the Mount. You know what? It's so hard for me to comprehend, especially that Jesus is talking to his disciples some 2,000 years ago, and the words that he's teaching are so relevant to today. And he was surrounded by people who were looking to get worldly gain and riches and fortunes, and they were preoccupied with acquiring more and more. And Jesus was addressing that there on the Sermon on the Mount. And we live in a society that's consumed with possessions and wealth. People are classified, people are judged, people are ranked by their accumulations of stuff instead of the character that they possess. Doesn't it seem like we can never get enough? That there's something always newer and bigger or better? We're never satisfied. Let me start off our discussion today by saying this. Possessions are not a sin. Material wealth is not a sin. Having a lot is not a sin. Matter of fact, there's nothing wrong with working hard and achieving success and having nice things. The problem is, is it's our love of possessions of things and it dictates our whole life and the way we run our life. And Jesus addresses this here in Matthew chapter six. He deals with how we're supposed to handle the want and the desire to have more. This is another one of those challenging messages that Jesus offers. In chapter six, verse 19, it says, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth. And then he gives you where we should store up treasure. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. According to Jesus, there are two places we can store up treasure, heaven and earth. All of us have treasure here on earth that we value. All of us have things that we find are essential to our happiness or essential to our fulfillment Um, possessions, money, material things. A lot of you are already thinking that I'm talking about just money, and and that's not true. But we're also going to talk about reputations and social status, and some people really value their looks or their brains or their education. The list goes on. We're talking about earthly stuff here on earth. And Jesus just said, don't store up for yourselves those type of things on earth. And he's going to tell us why here in a second. And then he's going to counter it and say, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven. So I think we have a good idea of what earthly treasures are. What does it mean to invest in kingdom work? When we're investing in kingdom work, it's not just your money. It's not just your talents or your spiritual gifting. It's all of that encompassed together. What are you doing that's lasting for kingdom work? What I'm talking about is when you invest in people, when you invest in ministry, when you get involved, when you're doing stuff that's going to last forever. We have to ask ourselves some pretty hard questions. What do we spend the majority of our time and the majority of our talent and the majority of our resources on? What I think he's trying to communicate in the overall part of the passage in this scripture is what are your priorities? Are your priorities the things of this earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal? Is that what the priority of your heart is? Is it titles and degrees and more money and more possessions? Is that really what you're chasing after? And Jesus says, if that's true, 
know this. Moth and rust destroy, and thieves are going to break in and steal. All the earthly stuff that we work so hard for, that people strive for, it doesn't last. And so many of us act like it's going to follow us somewhere someday to wherever it is that we go, hopefully heaven, right? And it doesn't. It's going to stay behind. And I think we Christians forget about investing in kingdom work that's going to last and is protected by God. Think about this. Will your million-dollar bank account follow you to heaven? You investing in young men or young ladies and helping them grow in their relationship with Christ and ministering to them and discipling them and encouraging them, that lasts forever. What's more important, the bank account or investing in the kingdom of God? Wherever your treasure is, whether it's in the earthly possessions or whether it's in kingdom investment, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. You can say that you want to invest in kingdom work because it lasts for eternity, but everything that you do is chasing after earthly possessions. Your heart has the wrong priority. And as a Christian, our priority ought to be kingdom work over earthly possessions. It really doesn't require a whole lot of explanation. Jesus tells this to his followers. Whatever consumes you, whatever you're passionate about, wherever you spend your time, wherever you spend your resources, whatever you think about, that's the priority of your life. So where do you spend the majority of your time? What do you spend your resources on? Where are you storing up treasures in this life? What's your priority? And Jesus is warning us. He said, be careful about your priorities. Be careful about what you allow to consume you because you can't and you won't be able to take it to heaven. He talks about a farmer and he was very prosperous. He built a great big barn because he had so much. He had been blessed. He has a lot. I'm going to store it up for the future. I got a little, you know, in the savings. And then God spoke to him. By the way, when God spoke to him, he wasn't very nice. He said, you fool, this very night, your life is required of you. And by the way, all those things that you stored up, who gets them now? Because all of that stuff is temporary and you're temporary in this world. And whatever you have and the possessions you have are temporary. And then Jesus tries to help us a little bit. He helps us by going on in this teaching in Matthew 6, and he says, the eye is the lamp of the body. Oh, isn't that so true? So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, Kind of sounds like somebody with wrong priorities, right? Your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? It kind of sounds like the eye is a decision-making vessel, if you want to call it. It's okay to have material possessions, but if it's driving you... What's going in your eye? If it's good, it's going to be used for kingdom purposes, to accomplish the mission of the kingdom. But if it's bad, then it's going to be all about you and your desire to have more. And then Jesus talks about having more. And he goes on verse 24, and he says, No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. Isn't that true? And then this is the kicker. This is the one that nobody likes. You cannot serve God and wealth. You cannot have two masters. And in other words, if the priorities of your life are more, then your priority is not God. There is only one Lord of your life. And divided allegiance and divided loyalty 
doesn't work. And Jesus recognizes it. He says you're only going to be able to serve one master at a time. You're either going to devote your time to the real master or you're going to devote your time to the other master, and you can't do both. You can't worship two gods. So the issue of this whole discussion comes down to one topic that is so difficult today for people to talk about. Jesus wants to be your Lord over all of your life. Some people call it Lordship. He wants to be the Lord over your life. And if you have two masters, one of them is earthly possessions and one of them is God, it doesn't work. And Jesus can't be Lord if there is another Lord in your life. Our obsession for stuff and our obsession to get more really decreases our passion for God. When stuff is the target of your life, then God gets pushed down. I think Paul recognized that, by the way, when he was talking to Timothy. He wanted Timothy to remind people not to be arrogant and not to set their hopes on uncertainty of wealth, but on God, a God who provides richly for us the things to enjoy. Do good. Be rich in good works. Be generous and willing to share, storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation in the coming age. Store up treasures for the kingdom. Pursue heavenly treasures over earthly treasures. Right now, ask yourself the hard question, what is it that I treasure? What is it that I really value? And whatever that is, that's where your heart is. I'm praying that your heart is in the kingdom work. Remember the eye, the eye is important, So if your eye is good and it's kingdom focus, that's great. But if it's bad, be careful because it's going to lead you down the wrong road. And the last thing that Jesus said in this passage, I think if it was the most relevant thing is, remember, you can only serve one master. It's either the earth and the stuff of the earth, or it's the kingdom work. There's a rich guy in the Bible. He goes up and asks to follow Jesus. Do you remember what Jesus told him to do? Go out then. Come follow me. But before you do that, go out and sell all your possessions and give them to the poor. Come be a part of what we're doing here for the next few years as I walk through my ministry. But before you do that, you got to get your priorities right. Go sell it all. Give it to people in need. And then come be a part of my team. Come be because you can't serve two masters. And then Jesus comes up with that very famous statement that probably you and I know. He said, what did he say? It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Now picture that, that camel going through the eye of the needle right now. It's easier for a camel to do that than it is a rich man to go to heaven. Why? because they have divided loyalty. The priorities are all wrong. And Jesus is calling us out on that. That's a challenge. I've told you this whole message is radical. It's changing everything. Remember, they were living in a society where there was the the ones who had, and there were the ones who had not. There were the people that looked the part of being rich and having all the titles and, and all the prestige, And he's saying, it's not about that. It's about being kingdom-minded and investing in kingdom work. So where's your heart? Jesus doesn't lay up on this message at all. He's going to continue to challenge us. So I want to pray for you. I want to pray for me too, because I didn't like this message very much, because there's even some areas in my life that still constantly need to be reminded, that's not your priority, Bob. Shouldn't be kingdom-minded. Invest in the kingdom. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you again for this word. It is again tough. I keep saying that, Lord, that this is hard because it is hard. 
and next week won't be any easier. But I pray, Father, that we would hear your words and ask ourselves the hard questions. Am I, am I, search my heart? What is the, the scriptures? Search my heart, God. Am I kingdom-minded or am I earthly-minded? And if I am earthly-minded, do I recognize that, well, it's all going to be either rusted or um, stolen or it's going to rot? And the only the things that last, Father, will be those things that we do in the kingdom and investing in the kingdom. Help me to be more kingdom-minded and kingdom purpose. Help those that are listening to be that as well. Father, thank you for Jesus. Again, thank you for your word, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I can't wait to get back to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to finish up the chapter with one of my life verses next week. I'm going to pray that it'll be one of your life verses when we finish. And until then, we'll see you back. If you were encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com or download the Real Life Church app. And again, thanks for listening to the Real Life Church Podcast.